uh, in the last lecture we had started discussing about statistical cluster analysis uh, techniques and we had introduced uh, the various types of uh, clustering techniques that are usually applied hierarchical or non-hierarchical non clustering and we were discussing the hierarchical clustering in more detail and to do that we were looking at uh, the type of uh, distance measures that are usually used because as we had discussed that once we form new clusters we need to find out the distance between the new cluster that is formed at a particular step of iteration and the existing clusters and in order to do that we need to have some sort of approach that we are we had started discussing the first type of approach that we uh, said was that of the single linkage wherein we look at the minimum distance between the two clusters uh, one may be newly formed and the other one may be an existing cluster so we try to find out what is the mutual distance in terms of the single linkage and that is basically is looking at the nearest neighbors among these two clusters. There are other ways of defining this distance between clusters which we are going to see first of all today. So the second one is what we call a, as a complete linkage. So the complete linkage distance in contrast to the single linkage it looks at the maximum distance as the way of looking at two different clusters and then finding out the distance between the two clusters. Let us look at the type of things that we were looking at for the single linkage. So suppose these two are two clusters. So uh, say this is cluster number 1 and this is my cluster number 2. Then in the previous uh, class we had this 1 and 2 in this cluster 1 and 3, 4, 5 in this order in cluster number 2. So it was a 5 here, a 3 here and we had the first case here 1 and the second case here 2. So this was uh, the structure of the two, two clusters. This visualized on a 2 dimension. If it is uh, on a higher dimensional than 3, we of course cannot visualize such clusters. But basically what we are trying to see is that among the mutual distances between any case that is belonging to cluster number 1 and any case that is belonging to cluster number 2. So, the distances will be d 1 3 that is the distance from 1 case number 1 to case number 3 which is belonging to the second cluster distance between 1 and 4 and distance between 1 and 5. So, these are the distance starting from this one node which is sitting here. Similarly, from the second case node number 2, we will have the distances as d 2 3, d 2 4 and d 2 5. So, these are the 6 possible distances which are which we, when we are looking at one case from cluster number 1 and the second case from cluster number 2. So, these are the distances. Now, when we look at complete linkage, in contrast to uh, in the single linkage we had looked at this d 2 5 which is the nearest neighbor this is the farthest neighbors that we are looking at. So, what we will be having for the furthest neighbors are these two points the distance between 1 and 4 1 belonging to cluster number 1 and 4 belonging to cluster number 4 uh, cluster number 2 appears to be the maximum. In any case, if uh, any other uh, distance is maximum, that would be the complete linkage distance. So, here once we have that interpretation, this complete linkage distance, complete linkage distance between cluster 1 and cluster 2 would thus be given by d 1 4. So, that now gives us the distance between these two clusters. When we have higher dimensions, we compute all such possible distances between the multidimensional points belonging to one cluster and the multidimensional points belonging to the other cluster and then find out which of them is maximum and then the maximum distance is used in order to measure the distance between the two stated clusters, cluster 1 and cluster 2. Right? That simple. In case we have K1, K1 cases belonging to cluster 1 and K2 cases belonging to cluster 2, we find out all such possible distances and then look at what is which distance is maximum and hence then uh, use that in order to give the complete linkage distance between the two clusters. 
Now, there is a third type of uh, distance measure which is called the average linkage, which is called the average linkage. So, this looks at the average distance, average distance in what sense. So, we still have this uh, two clusters, cluster 1 and cluster 2, 1 and 2 sitting here and uh, we have another cluster here which is having the cases which is 5, then we have a case 3 and a case 4 sitting here. Now, we will be looking at the average of the distances, the distances are one unit belonging to one cluster and the other unit belonging to the other cluster. So, we look at all possible such d i j's i belonging to cluster number 1 and j belonging to cluster number 2 and then find out the average over all i j i belonging to cluster number 1 j belonging to cluster number 2. So, what we will be having here is that from 1 we have one distance here, from 1 we have a distance hit to 5, from 1 we have another distance to 4, from 2 we have a distance to 3, from 2 we also have a distance to 5 and we have a distance to 4. right? So, the average linkage would be the average of all these 6 distances that we have come, uh, come up with. So, the average linkage distance between the two clusters, cluster number 1 here and cluster number 2 here is going to be given by there are 6 such distances and thus this is going to be just the sum of d 1 3 plus d 1 4 plus d 1 5 this plus d 2 3 plus d 2 4 plus d 2 5. Right? So, these are all these 6 possible distances, distances computed when one object from one cluster is taken to be compared with another object in the other cluster and that 1 upon 6. So, in general as I said that this average distance is going to be 1 upon the number of such distances, if this has k 1, if this has k 2, then this number would be k 1 times k 2 and then we will have a summation, double summation over i and j, i belonging to cluster number 1 and j belonging to cluster number 2. So, these three are the most widely used, di used distance measures in order to compute distance between two clusters. There are other type of measures, which is one is called centroid linkage. So, this basically is looking at the distance between the two centroids of the two clusters. So, this is the distance between centroids of the two clusters. So, one can compute what are the centroids of the respective clusters and then find out what is the distance uh, with respect to whatever distance metric we are considering between the two centroids similar to the centroids where, wherein we are looking at the mean of these points, central point one can look at median also, median linkage. So, this is going to be the distance between medians of the two formed clusters. So, this is these are some various ways of looking at uh, how to measure distance between two separate clusters. Now, we look at the agglomerative single linkage algorithm in detail. Let me start fresh here and then try to understand how they, these distance measures are going to play a role when we actually form this agglomerative clustering, which where wherein we are going to end up finally, with a dendrogram tree, uh, tree structure, which is going to give us clusters in a hierarchical form. So, let us look at this single linkage agglomerative algorithm. Now, how is this going to go about? This is going to grow, go about in the following way that groups are formed from individual objects by merging the cases which has got the shortest distance by merging I can say which are nearest neighbors 
the nearest neighbors that is cases having cases or objects having shortest distance shortest or minimum distance so once you have that we can follow these steps here that given this d matrix which is a starting point find first the smallest uh, find first u and v such that this is smallest I will say find first u and v such that d u v is basically the minimum among all d i j's minimum over all i j here. So, we are looking at the distance matrix. So, we of course, have uh, to start with a matrix D which is n by n corresponding to the n objects. So, this is the distance matrix. So, corresponding to all those n cases we have this D to give us the distance matrix and these D i j s are elements of that distance matrix. So, we first find u and v such that D u v the distance between u and v is the minimum possible. Then we will merge these two. So, we will merge or fuse u and v to form the cluster u v. Now, comes the fact that once u and v have been merged, we have these two forming one single cluster and then from the remaining n minus 2 cases, we will have n minus 2 clusters and this will make up the n minus 1 th cluster. Now, we need to find out what is the distance between u v cluster and the cluster which we have the original existing n minus 2 clusters. Now, we will follow the general agglomerative steps here. So, at step 3 of general agglomerative agglomerative hierarchical cluster analysis, the distance matrix needs to be updated. So, the distance matrix updation stage, the distance between between u v this newly formed cluster and any of the other and any other cluster say w there will be n minus 2 of them at this first step the distance between this and this is computed by is going to be computed by the following form that distance between u v this is the newly formed cluster and w note that we are now using a single linkage. So, we have one cluster wherein there are two cases and the other cluster which is having only single case which is having the identity as a w. So, what we are going to do if we are looking at a single linkage ag uh, agglomerative algorithm is the following that we will look at the distance between u and w and v and w and then find out which is minimum and that minimum would then uh, be the distance between this newly formed cluster u v and the existing cluster which is w. So, what we will be having is the distance between u v and w to be given by minimum of these two quantities distance between u and w and distance between v and w simple. So, once we can do that we can do it for all subsequent iterations. So, one can actually look at that continue the steps of iteration uh, we had the number c here. So, at this d continue iterations with distance matrix upgradations uh, or rather updations updations using a single linkage distance. This is to be continued till 
we get n clusters. That is, we come down to the last level of the finest level of resolution. In the finest level of resolutions, individual cases are going to be members of uh, single clusters. So, a case will be sitting uh, actually on one single cluster. Right? Now, just to remind you that uh, this is what we are going to have. Results are going to be displayed using a dendrogram tree displayed through dendrogram tree. And that branching type of structure is going to lead us to the hierarchical clustering that is what is desired here. Right? Now, one can use the similar type of approach when we have a complete link, uh, linkage or an average linkage. So, for the complete linkage, I am not going to write the entire algorithm once again, we will just uh, say at what point that is going to differ. It is going to differ this complete, uh, let me first write it, complete linkage agglomerative algorithm. So, how is this going to behave? this is going to go along exactly in the same line up to this particular stage, wherein we require updation of the distance matrix. And when we are then trying to uh, have updation of the distance matrix, we need to once again find out the distance between u v and the cluster w. And that is now going to be given through a complete linkage, if we have a complete linkage algor um, agglomerative algorithm. And there, instead of minimum, which is going to look at the nearest neighbors, in a complete linkage, we are going to look at the furthest neighbors and hence, this minimum would get just replaced by maximum. So, we will just say that at this step 3 here, at step 3 of the general agglomerative algorithm. use a complete linkage distance, linkage distance between clusters, distance between clusters. That is, now this distance between u v, the newly formed cluster and an existing cluster w is going to be given by the maximum over the same two distances d u w and d v w. All other steps are same as the single linkage algorithm. Right? So, it is very simple. You have the single linkage a, um, agglomerative algorithm in this following way. So, you will have the complete linkage. First, you look at the minimum, which two objects are closest by finding the minimum over i j of all these d i j entries, then fuse them, form the cluster and then come to the updation stage and there the distance between newly formed cluster u v and existing case w, uh, existing case at the first step. Now, in the second stages onwards, this also will be clusters. So, we will have that being computed through a complete linkage and wherein we will be using this maximum here. Now, when we have an average linkage, the steps also are similar. So, average linkage agglomerative, agglomerative algorithm will follow exactly in the same way. We will have at the third step only these algorithms are going to differ at step 3 of general hierarchical cluster analysis algorithm, we use the distance between u v formed the cluster, new cluster and w as this d u v, this is the first cluster that is formed and w that is going to be given by 1 upon, let me write this fraction a bit larger, 
this is the number of cases which are there in u v and the number of cases which may be there in w at the first step this n w will be equal to 1 and n u v will be equal to 2, but at the subsequent steps when we are looking at the other iterations in order to get to the n clusters this will these will be different we will see that in data examples. Now, this in the numerator we have summation over i summation over k and the distance is given by d i k, wherein we have got this following interpretation that this d i k is the distance between object i in cluster u v in cluster u v. and object k belonging to the cluster which is denoted by w this is an existing cluster. So, what we are looking at is we are looking at all d i k s such that i is belonging to the u v cluster and k is belonging to the w cluster and then finding out all such distances and then finally, that is going to be given by the average linkage and the average linkage would find out the average of all such distances. So, this is the total of all such distances and this these are the number of such distances and hence we will have this to give us the average of this the all such distances. This n u v is the number of objects in cluster u v and similarly, this n w is the number of objects in the cluster which is given by w right. Let us look at a numerical example in order to see how these things actually work. Let us look at this numerical example uh, we have got this distance matrix to start with. So, the raw data has been transformed into the following distance matrix which is given by say d which is of the following form it is a symmetric matrix as we discussed yesterday that we will be having this 0 along the diagonals, because this is going to measure the distance between 1 and itself and that is 0. This is going to measure the distance between 2 and 2 that is going to be 0. So, distance from itself is taken to be 0 naturally. These are the other entries let me plug in these entries 6 5 9 0 and the last row is giving the distances as 11, 10, 2, 8 and 0. So, this has got a 5 by 5 dimension. So, they are there are naturally 5 cases. So, we have 5 objects or cases which needs to be clustered according to hierarchical clustering algorithm. First of all, let us look at a single linkage uh, agglomerative hierarchical clustering. So, this distance matrix has got the interpretation that these are basically the objects object identifications. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 this along the columns 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 right. So, these are all the d i j entries. So, this matrix is basically the matrix of distances. So, we will have that to be given by these d i j s. For example, this particular term here is the distance between object 2 and object 5. Now, suppose we are trying to implement a single linkage agglomerative hierarchical cluster right. So, we are trying to implement the algorithm that we have just now learnt in order to get clusters hierarchical cluster out of clusters rather from this particular data which has been represented through a distance matrix. Now, if we are going to do that what is the first thing that we will be doing. So, stage 1 from this distance matrix we are going to see which of the two case cases are closest. Now, if we look at the mutual distances we find that this is the smallest. So, remember what we were doing here when we were discussing these algorithms that we will be looking at find first two cases u and v 
such that d u v is minimum among all such d i j's. So, for this given data, what is that? These are d i j's, minimum of all these d i j's of course, excluding zeros, because uh, there is no point fusing one with itself, it is already sitting in one cluster. So, we, we have to look at all such d i uh, j's such that i is not equal to j of course. So, we will have this 2, which is the minimum here. So, this d 5 2 is minimum, minimum among all these d i j's. So, this would imply that we will fuse 2 and 5 to form first stage cluster first stage cluster at a distance level of 2, at a distance level of 2, at a distance level of 2 units. And we will have to preserve this particular information, because we would require these informations later on, in order to frame the dendrogram diagram. So, this is an input at the stage 1, which we need to keep track of. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is that, now this, uh, let me see, it is not 2 and 5, this is corresponding to 3, 5. So, we are going to fuse case number 3, 2, 5 is here, uh, we are going to fuse case number 3 from here and case number 5 and thus, this is going to be replaced by 3 here. So, we are fusing case number 3 and case number 5 at level 2. Now, since 3 and 5 are no longer members of single unit clusters, the distance matrix when that needs to be updated, what are the existing clusters? The existing clusters will be singleton point clusters, which is having case 1 as 1.1 1 .1 cluster, second cluster which is having 2, uh, the second unit and then 4 will also be a member, because that is an existing cluster and the new cluster is 3 and 5. So, we will have to find the next distance matrix, which is going to be a 4 by 4 distance matrix, wherein the 4 clusters are 1, 2, 4 and 1, 2, 4 and 3, 5. So, this is stage 2 of this clustering algorithm. Updation of distance matrix. Now, the distance matrix D is now going to be a 4 by 4 matrix, wherein the distances are the distances corresponding to the previous terms there. So, we will have from the previous expression only, there is one case here, one cluster here, which is new to us. These 1, 2 and 4 are existing clusters. So, there is one new entry here and these are 1, 2, 4, which are existing clusters. So, we will have along the diagonals similarly zeros. Now, these distances note that the distance between 2 and 1, between 4 and 1, between 4 and 2 are already present in the previous distance matrix. Distance between 1 and 2 2 or the clusters which are not yet merged, distance between 4 and 2, which is going to be given by this, they are already present in the previous cluster. So, what we will be doing is just to copy them from the previous expression, which are the following, that we will have this distance between 1 and 2. Let me just see once again, distance between 1 and 2 is 9. So, we just plug in 9 out here, distance between 1 and 4 is an entry which is required, 1 and 4 is 6. So, we will have this entry as 6 and similarly, this is the distance between 2 and 4, which is 5. Now, these entries here, these 3 entries, what is this? This is the distance between the newly formed cluster 3, 5 and 1, which is not present in the previous uh, diagram there. From the previous distance matrix, what we had done was since these two were the merged units, we will have to delete all these entries from here, 
right that is what we have to do because those two have been merged. Now we will have to compute this, we will have to compute this and we will have to compute this. So, what are those things? We will require the distance between the cluster 3, 5 and 1. Now, we are on a single linkage and hence we would look at the minimum distance between 1 and 3 and the distance between 1 and 5. 1 belonging to this cl uh, cluster here, 3 belonging to the point here and 5 belonging to the uh, fused cluster. So, from the previous distance matrix, we will actually look at what is d 1 3 and what is d 1 5 from the given data they can easily be uh, found out what uh, those quantities are are 3 and 11 and the minimum of that is equal to 3. So, the distance between the newly formed cluster 3 5 and 1 is thus going to be 3. So, we will have the entry here as 3. Similarly, the distance between 3 5 the newly formed cluster and 2 would be the minimum of the two distances, distance between 2 and 3 and the distance between 2 and 5. So, we can find out that also from the distance matrix, the original distance matrix and hence we will be able to fill up this particular table which would turn out to be 7 and similarly this distance between the 3 5 new cluster and the cluster which is 4 which is obtained as 8. So, this distance matrix is the updated which is the updated distance matrix. So, what we said is if we have an n by n uh, distance matrix to start with at the first step two cases are going to be fused and we will be having an updated distance matrix which is going to be an n minus 1 cross n minus 1. So, we had here five cases we had started with a distance matrix 5 by 5, now we have come down to 4 by 4. So, that completes the stage 2 here. Now, stage 3. Stage 3 is basically the second step of iteration, wherein we are now going to form two new clusters uh, or rather we are going to fuse two new cluster, uh, two old clusters to form a new cluster. Now, we will look at this distance matrix as the benchmark distance matrix now and then try to find out which of these units are closest to one another. Now, if we look at closest, we will have this 3 as the minimum that is now coming in this modified or updated distance matrix. So, we look for minimum distance, minimum distance in the updated distance matrix and that would lead us to fusing this 3 5 cluster and the singleton cluster which was having case number 1 as the entry. Now, what we have to do is to take a note of this particular fact that this 1 3 5 are getting merged into one single cluster at what distance if uh, one is very particular one should actually write it in this way that one is getting fused with the cluster which was containing 3 5 2 units at what level the level is 3. So, this is the second information that one needs to store. The first information we had stored that 3 5 were merged at level 2 and now 1 and 3 5 were merged at level uh, 3. Now, note that from the previous distance matrix, now neither 1 would be present in the next step of uh, updated distance matrix nor will 3 5 be present. So, we cannot have anything corresponding to this row here 1 this also would vanish and the corresponding column corresponding to this 1 also will vanish because we are not going to have one entry there. So, we will have to update the distance matrix. So, that brings us to stage number 4, stage number 4 updation of 
new distance matrix. Now, what is going to be the dimension of that particular distance matrix? The previous distance matrix had a dimension 4 by 4. So, the now the new distance matrix which should now be having this 1, 3, 5 as a standing 1 cluster and 3 and 4, uh, 2 and 4 to be the other two existing clusters uh, carried forward from the previous step of iteration and hence we will have in total 3 clusters and hence the updated distance matrix is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix, wherein we will have entries corresponding to. Now, this case number 2 is an existing cluster. So, a, a, uh, this would remain as it is and we have a new cluster now, which is 1, 3, 5. This is 1, 3, 5, this is 2 and this is 4, this 2 are existing clusters. So, we will have a 3 by 3 distance matrix, wherein we need to compute something and something will be carried forward. What are the things that would be carried forward? Now, this is an entry which is going to give us the distance between case 2 and case 4, which we will be having from the previous table itself. So, the distance between 2 and 4 or the distance between 4 and 2 are same, so that would be 5. So, from the previous table, we will have one entry out here, which is going to be 5 and what is this entry? this entry, these needs to be computed. This is the distance between the cluster 1, 3, 5 and the cluster 2, which is an existing cluster. This is a new cluster and this is the distance between 1, 3, 5 cluster and the cluster, which is 4. Now, we are going to compute that exactly in the same way as what we had done previously. So, this is going to be the minimum of the distance between. Now, remember 1 and 3, 5 have been fused. So, one can find the distance between 1 and 2 and the distance between 3, 5, because 3, 5 is an identity which is carried forward from the previous step. So, we can find out what is the distance d 1, 2 and the distance d 3, 5, 2 and then find out what is the minimum of these two distances. From the given data, what it turns out is that this is uh, d 1 2 is given by 9 and d 3 5 2, which is coming from the previous table d 3 5 2 is 7. This is 7. So, the minimum is 7 and hence the distance between this newly formed cluster and an old cluster 2 is 7. Similarly, this distance between 1 3 5 and 4 is going to be given by minimum of d 1 4 and the distance of 3 5 and 4. From the tables, this from the previous table one can similarly compute this as 6. So, this is now the updated distance matrix at this second stage of iteration, updated distance matrix. So, once we have this the updated distance matrix, we move on to the third step of iteration at stage 5, which is basically the third step of iteration. We look at this updated distance matrix and find out which distance is minimum. Now, we note that this is the minimum if i is not equal to j from that distance matrix and hence this distance between 2 and 4 is minimum. So, that that would imply that we, we are required to fuse this case number 2 and case number 4 to form a new cluster, to form a new cluster. Right. So, once we have these to form a new cluster, the information about this fusion of cases and the mutual distances needs to be preserved, because that is what is going to be required when we are going to construct the dendrogram diagram. So, we will say that this 2 and 4 has been merged at a level, which is at a level of distance 5. So, at the third step of iteration, we have this information to be retained. Look back at the other information, this is the first information that we have retained this is the second information that we have retained at the second step of iteration, the previous one at the first step of iteration and this 
at the third step of iteration. Now, what is the situation at the end of this third step of iteration? At the end of the third step of iteration, we have got 1 3 5 to be a one cluster unit and 2 4 to be another cluster unit. So, we have two clusters now. Now, we will have to fuse them together. The only point of interest is to see at what distance level. So, we come to this stage 6 now. Once again, it is after the fusion, we have to look at the distance matrix updation. So, when we look at this distance matrix updation, we will now be having in the previous distance matrix, it was a 3 by 3, 5 by 4, 4 by 4, 3 by 3 and now we will be having a 2 by 2 distance matrix. And what are the entries? The first entry is 1, 3, 5 that is the existing cluster and we have 2, 4 to be the newly formed cluster. So, we will have this 2 by 2 distance matrix, only one element is important because the other entries are zeros because that is the mutual distance between 1, 3, 5 cluster and itself and the distance between 2, 4 cluster and itself. So, this is what we need to find out and what is that? This is the distance between the cluster 1, 3, 5 and the cluster which is 2, 4. Now, how is that going to be obtained from the previous table? We are trying to look at the distance between 1, 3, 5 and the cluster 2, 4. Now, we will be looking at 1, 3, 5 cluster and an unit taken from the second cluster that is 2 and then we will look at the distance between 1, 3, 5 and an unit taken from the, the other units taken from the other cluster which is unit number 4. So, that this would actually turn out to be that will uh, we are required to find out the minimum of 1, 3, 5. This is an existing cluster and a newly formed uh, cluster unit that is 2 and the distance one between 1, 3, 5 this cluster and the unit 4 which is now uh, fused with 2. Now, the entries corresponding to this can be obtained from the previous table 1, 3, 5 and 2 that is 7 and 1, 3, 5 and 4 that is 6. So, we will have the minimum of 1, 3, 5 uh, let me go back once again 1, 3, 5 and 2 is 7 and the next is 6. So, we will have minimum of this 7 and 6 which is 6. Thus, this is equal to 6. right? So, this is at the last step of iteration, this is updated distance matrix after the fusion has taken place. So, from this updated distance matrix, we will look at this and then we will anyway have to fuse because there are two clusters and we have to have one single cluster at the end of the day at the end of the agglomerative uh, hierarchical cluster analysis and hence we see that this naturally is the only entry which is also the minimum. So, we will say that at the last stage which is stage 7, we will fuse this 1, 3, 5 cluster and the cluster which is containing these two cases 2, 4 at a level, a level of distance 6. So, the last bit of information that we need to keep is that 1, 3, 5 and this 2, 4 all coming into one cluster. Let me still put a bracket here, so that this cluster and this cluster are merged at a fusion level of 6. So, this is at the end of the fourth step. So, now we look back at the output of this particular algorithm. This is one that we are going to take. This is the second input that we are going to take. This is the third input that we are going to take and this is the last input that we are going to take. Now, the thing that remains is the last stage, stage 7, which is construction of dendrogram tree from this output of the algorithm, dendrogram tree. Right? Now, in order to do that, 
as I said that we need to collect this entire information. This line is not particularly straight. Oops. Right. So, this on this y axis we have distance being measured and here we will have the cases. So, let me just mark them say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Suppose, these are the distances. So, this is a distance 2, this is a distance 4, this is the distance 6, 8 and 10. Right. Now, we look back at the output of the system. This is what we are first going to consider. So, we will fuse two, uh, 3 and 5 at a level 2. At a level 2, this case number 3 and case number 5 are the ones to be fused at this particular level which is 5, uh, uh, level 2. So, we will have the, this is the first input basically, that is what we had from this algorithm 3 5 merging at distance level 2. What is the next 1 3 and 5 merged at level 3. So, how to represent that 3 and 5 are already there. So, we will have this as case number 1. Now, we will have this being fused at what level I just uh, need to look at that at level 3. So, this is the distance. So, that we will have corresponding to this distance 3, these 3 cases 1 is getting merged with 3 5. So, this is that at level 3, right. So, this was if this was the first step of iteration being represented in the dendrogram, this is the second step of iteration. Now, what is the third step of iteration? This is the second step. At the third step of iteration, two new clusters 2 and 4 are merged at a level 5, right. So, there are two new cases 2 and 4, these are two new cases, they are going to be merged at this level which is distance level 5. So, we will have the two. branches corresponding to these two cases 2 and 4 getting merged at this level 5. Right. So, that is the third iteration uh, input that is what we have got and this is 3 uh, or this is not 3 once again this has to be the fourth step of iteration. So, this is the fourth step of iteration. We see that 1 3 5 an existing cluster and 2 4 another existing cluster is now getting merged at a level 6. So, this is the an existing cluster 2 4, this is another existing cluster, they are different up to the distance level which is 6 here and then getting merged to form the a single cluster. So, this is the distance level 6 at which they are getting merged. So, the figure that we have obtained here is the dendrogram tree. Now, this dendrogram tree is to be interpreted exactly in the same way as what uh, we had seen for the general discussion on uh, such interpretations of dendrogram tree. For example, if we put our reference frame uh, somewhere here say suppose this is the reference frame, reference distance frame or the viewpoint. So, from this dendrogram tree, if we say that well 4.2 is in uh, 4.2 or 4.3 is the distance at which we are going to look at the hierarchical clusters. So, the clusters below those are 1 singleton cluster which is 4, another singleton cluster which is 2 and there is one big cluster which is having cases 1, 3 and 5. So, as you can see that this constructed dendrogram now is a perfect example of a hierarchical structure 
wherein it is a tree structure in the tree structure in the sense that you, you can look at this particular line to represent a branch of a tree below which all the cases are sub branches. If you look at this particular level, then there are two branches of the tree. In one branch, there are two cases 2 and 4. In the other branch, there are three cases which are 1, 3 and 5. If we truncate the tree at this particular level, there are three br branches coming from that particular level, which is having 4, 2 and 1, 3, 5 in three different clusters. So, that is how a dendrogram is constructed. For a, a given higher dimensional, multidimensional data, uh, we can actually replicate the algorithm, the numerical algorithm that is what uh, I tried to illustrate in order to get to such a dendrogram tree. With only one thing to remember that when we were looking at this particular example, we started with a distance matrix. For any practical data set, what we will be having is say x 1, x 2, x n. If we have this, uh, let me write it in a separate uh, page. For n data points, n data points x 1, x 2, x n, these are all multidimensional data, say these are belonging to r to the power p. From these data, obtain the distance matrix, obtain this n by n distance matrix, there are n cases, so n by n distance matrix and then proceed with d to obtain this hierarchical clustering dendrogram tree structure. Now, what we will do is that we will look at example number 2, wherein I will try to look at a complete linkage algorithm being implemented. Uh, let us start with this distance matrix, uh, which I think is the same as what we started with the single linkage. So, the entries here are 090, 370 and then we have 6, 5, 9 and then we have 11, 10, 11, 10, 2, this has to be 0, 2, 8 and 0. So, these are the different objects, first object, second object, third multidimensional object, fourth multidimensional object and fifth multidimensional objects, object. So, we will have 1, 2, 3 also along the columns. So, this is what is the distance matrix. So, from this distance matrix, we are going to obtain a complete linkage agglomerative hierarchical cluster uh, dendrogram tree. Right? Now, what we are going to do, I am going to write less as what compared to the previous uh, example. So, at the stage 1, we look at this distance matrix and look at which of the two cases are most similar. So, we see that this d i j is minimum except those which are all diagonal because that does not make any sense. We will have this as the minimum which is the distance between 3 and 5. So, we will have this fuse 3 and 5 at level 2. So, we have the first output which is 3 5 getting fused at level 2. Up to this particular point, the algorithm has not at all differed from the type of algorithm which is used for the single linkage. Now, when we have this, we need to go to the second step of this algorithm which is updation of d addition of this distance matrix. Now, the new distance matrix will have an identity which is 3, 5 and then we will have the existing cases which is 1, 2 and 4. So, this is that 3, 5, 1, 2 and 4. Now, as before, we will have some entries coming directly from the previous table, uh, like the distance between 2 and 1, distance between 2 and 4. So, those are going to be exactly what we have in the previous uh, structure. 
which is what we have as the following that this is 9, 6 and 5. So, these are what are coming from this particular table itself. Now, in order to update the distance, what we said that this cannot be present now, we have to delete this, we have to delete this particular term also. So, and also the row wherein 3 is present, so this also gets deleted and then this also will be deleted. So, we will have these remaining 9, 6 and 5 as you can see 9, 6 and 5 coming directly from there. Right? And these two are the quantities that we need to compute. What are those? That is the distance between 3, 5 and 1. Now, we are on a complete linkage. So, we will find out what is the distance, what is the maximum distance between any object taken from the one group there. So, 1, 3 and d 1, 5. So, d 1, 3 is 3 and d 1, 5 is 11. So, the maximum of 3 and 11 would just be given by 11. So, this under a complete linkage would now be given by 11, which is different from what it was for the single linkage. Similarly, this particular element here, we need to find out what is the distance between 3, 5 and 4 and that is going to be the maximum distance between distance 3, 4 and distance 4, 5, which are coming from the previous table that is 10 the maximum is going to be given by this 3, 5, 2 would be 10 and then another entry is required which is distance between 3, 5 and 4 which would turn out that it is 9. So, we have these three new entries which this is giving the distance between 3, 5 and 1 which comes from the updation of the distance matrix, distance between 3, 5 and 2, distance between 3, 5 and 4 which is uh, 9 the maximum distance between uh, 3, 4 and 4, 5. right? So, that we will have 3, 5 and 4 this uh, is equal to 9 and the other one will be equal to 10. So, from this, this distance matrix now would be used when we are now looking at fusing two new cases as we will see here that this is the minimum minimum among the remaining d i j's and hence the two cases are going to be fused and then we will construct the dendrogram corresponding to this uh, this example in the next lecture thank you